I decided to upgrade to the latest new super fast 3 gigabit fiber optic internet plan here in Canada. In this video I'll go over my home setup and the considerations for upgrading from a 1 gigabit to 3 gigabit internet connection. I explain the hardware upgrades required and the actual benefits of upgrading your internet speeds by 200%, including the impact on your Wi-Fi network and devices. Telus Communications recently launched their new flagship fiber optic internet service, Telus Pure Fiber X Internet 3G. Building on the already impressive 1 gigabit fiber optic home internet, Pure Fiber X now delivers three times the potential speed of the older service. This means that using true fiber optic connections from your street junction or neighborhood box to your house, you will be able to access a theoretical 3 gigabits upload and download speed. However, it's worth noting that the theoretical or marketed speed is never actually what you experience for various reasons. Distance to whatever servers you're trying to connect to, the hardware limitations of your own network, and other traffic will impact your actual internet speed. The good news is that the older service is also subject to the same limitations, and that upgrading to the new 3G service is relative. You will see a 200% increase in performance relative to the real-world performance of the 1 gigabit service. One question you might ask is why do you require such monstrous speeds when even streaming a 4K movie only requires as little as 50 megabits per second? Plus, most homes aren't equipped to handle such speeds, especially over Wi-Fi. A more modest 1 gigabit connection is probably more than enough for most homes, even in the most taxing circumstances. This is all true, but if you continue to watch this video, I'll outline and explain my rationale and my own use which may apply to you too. It includes the increasingly silly number of internet-enabled devices we are accumulating as a family, as well as how I use the internet for my work as a content creator on YouTube. But one very salient reason I had was that the new Telus Pure Fiber X service is only $20 more expensive a month, even with the discount incentives for new customers. That does include some very important related costs, which I'll explain as I go on. As I mentioned, both as a tech enthusiast and also as a YouTube content creator specialising in tech, I've managed to accumulate a lot of internet-enabled devices. Even excluding the devices that the average family probably has, the modern household today will have a lot of technology that requires an internet connection. In my own home we have over 45 internet-enabled devices active at any given time. Collectively they draw down 1.5 terabytes of data every single month. Both my work and our leisure activities account for a large chunk of the data and bandwidth, but the myriad of other additional devices also contribute to that total. First and foremost amongst those devices is my work and gaming PC, which is the one piece of technology that utilises most of the 3 gigabits per second connection. And I do make use of it on a daily basis. My PC is built on an Asus Prime Z590P motherboard with a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet controller. For the rest of my setup, even the most data-hungry devices can only handle a 1 gigabit connection. This includes my 4K Google TV installed in our family room. We also have two other HD Google TVs, two tablets for my kids, two high-end mobile phones and a large collection of smart devices from security cameras to speakers. One critical consideration for making the most of the new 3 gigabit service is that you will need an Ethernet connection to any device that can utilise the bandwidth. At this time, even if you're lucky enough to be using the latest Wi-Fi 6E routers, the maximum theoretical throughput is 1.2 gigabits per second, which is less than half the available speed from the new service. My house is networked with Cat6 Ethernet throughout, thanks to some forward planning when building the property. Cat6, or Category 6, is the successor to the previous Cat5 and Cat5e Ethernet standard. The main benefit of Cat6 is it features much faster speed and higher bandwidth than older cables. Unlike Cat5, which is limited to a maximum of 1 gigabit throughput, Cat5e and Cat6 can achieve up to 10 gigabytes per second over shorter lengths of cable of around 55 meters or 180 feet, depending on the quality of the cable and the installation. In my own home, that limit is well under the threshold, so I'm able to utilize the bandwidth from the fiber optic modem coming into my house. However, that's where I experienced my first challenge. In my own setup, I run the cable from my modem in the garage to a network switch on the second floor. If you're not familiar with the hardware, a network switch is essentially a junction box where you can split the incoming internet and send it along ethernet cables installed in your building to other locations in your home or office. My previous hardware located in my entertainment panel was only a one gigabit switch, 
So while 3 gigabits per second was being pumped into the switch itself, it would only ever distribute a maximum of 1 gigabit per second to other devices. After some quick research and counting the number of rooms and devices in my home that accommodate an Ethernet connection, I settled on the TP-Link TL-SG108M2. This is where I made my first compromise. If you're looking at the specifications of the M2, the first thing you'll notice is that it only supports a maximum of 2.5 gigabits. Doing some simple math, you'll quickly realise that I'm giving up around 500 megabits per second of additional internet speed. I did think long and hard about its bigger brother, the TL-SX1008. It features the ability to accommodate 10 gigabit speeds, but at an extra $200, I decided I would take the hit as the other model would still increase my internet speed by 150%. I think that should the price of the switch ever come down and my internet requirements ever need that extra 500 megabits per second, I can easily upgrade at a later date. As mentioned earlier, the only device I have in my house that utilizes most of the 3 gigabit connection is my PC, which itself only has a 2.5 gigabit ethernet controller anyway. When I inevitably upgrade my PC and buy more consumer electronics that require a faster connection, I'll look into upgrading the network switch too. For further context, even the most internet demanding devices available today can't utilize faster internet. For example, the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X only support a one gigabit ethernet connection for online multiplayer and downloading games. As part of the upgrade for my service, it also includes two new TELUS boosts, as TELUS calls them. While not related to the speed of the internet for my hardwired network, the new routers support the new Wi-Fi 6 standard, which enables data speeds of upwards of 600 megabits per second. By comparison, Wi-Fi 5 starts at a slower potential speed, depending on a number of factors, at 433 megabits per second. You do need Wi-Fi 6 compatible devices to enjoy the benefits of the new Wi-Fi standard. For instance, in our household, both my wife's Pixel 6 and my Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra are Wi-Fi 6 compatible. If your devices are compatible, Wi-Fi 6 enables some additional cool features. These include faster data speeds due to bandwidth improvements and more efficient data management between multiple devices, making everything on your network faster. Wi-Fi 6 routers also have the ability to decrease the interference from other networks, such as your neighbor's Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi 6 routers can even improve the battery life of the Wi-Fi 6 compatible devices connected to the network by cleverly scheduling data transfers to alleviate the need for that device to always have their Wi-Fi antenna switched on. For the time being, a lot of contemporary technology will be limited to Wi-Fi 5 and the slower network speed. In my household, devices like our Google TVs, my kids' tablets and a myriad of smart devices don't support Wi-Fi 6. However, an increasing amount of future consumer electronics will start to adopt the new specification. At this time, I'm satisfied that I'm future-proofing my home while my wife and I enjoy the benefits of Wi-Fi 6 on our phones at the very least. It's worth noting at this time in the video that the provided standard TELUS routers do not support Wi-Fi 6E, and that's the new 6 GHz band. They use the legacy 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands. In a nice turn of events for us, my TELUS account included a free Wi-Fi 6E extender. Once installed, you can then connect your Wi-Fi 6E compatible devices, like our phones, to get the additional benefit of the technology. I'm excited by the benefits of 6 GHz. By the nature of being a new frequency, fewer devices use it, and so devices that are compatible will enjoy even better performance because they won't be competing for bandwidth with as many other devices. I tested my Wi-Fi speed on the Wi-Fi 6 5 GHz channel and then the new Wi-Fi 6E 6 GHz channel to see if I could notice a difference in performance alone. And within an optimal range of the extender, it's almost double the speed. There are other third-party 6E router options available like the Google Nest Wi-Fi Pro and Amazon's Eero Pro 6E. I'll have to check out both of those in the coming months to compare. As it stands at the time of this video, most of my own devices are still limited to the congested 2.4 GHz and slightly less congested 5 GHz bands. The addition of the Wi-Fi 6E booster to my home is definitely a nice addition for two devices that we have that use it. However, it would be difficult to recommend the additional cost to anyone else until more everyday consumer electronics can utilize the 6 GHz band. It might be a worthwhile investment if you find you have a lot of devices on the existing 5 GHz band, also, some of the latest computer motherboards do support Wi-Fi 6E if an Ethernet connection isn't available. So you might be wondering how I actually use the new faster internet service. The first and most important benefit to me is as a video content creator working from home. As part of my content creation process, I download a lot of B-roll and assets from services like Storyblocks. 
Having the extra bandwidth to secure the clips I need faster helps with my productivity. The other more obvious benefit is the ability to upload my completed videos to YouTube in record time. On a daily basis I use Google Drive to not only back up my work and store exports, but mirror my desktop and upload videos from my phone directly to a folder on my computer for editing. A lot of the videos I create involve using a mobile app. I find it more convenient to screen record on my phone and thanks to Google Drive and the desktop app I can drop the footage directly into my working folder. Once uploaded to the cloud, Google Drive will download a mirrored file to my computer ready for use in Premiere Pro. With the new faster internet the whole process is almost instantaneous despite the files being around 100 megabytes each. I previously published a video about how to create a remote access to your computer using Google Drive, so if you're interested in learning more, check out that video. Talking of video production, another ancillary benefit is that updating my Adobe suite of apps is extremely fast each time too. Updating Premiere Pro, Animate, Audition and other apps now takes next to no time. I also work extensively with other Google products. I now have super fast access to my Google Workspace, plus I also freelance and manage AdWords campaigns and websites for clients too. The load times for the dashboards and the back end is much faster, saving me time and the clients money. Outside of work, the main benefit includes the fact that the new network speed and bandwidth comfortably accommodates the three Google TVs and two kids' tablets simultaneously streaming content without any delays or buffering. Even viewing 4K content is uninterrupted. Perhaps the most satisfying aspect of the new superfast speeds is that even just updating the hardware from my old Google Nest router has had a marked increase on speeds to my existing Google TVs, even the ones using Wi-Fi instead of the LAN adapter that I bought to use the Ethernet. Watching YouTube and loading new videos is like switching channels on a cable box. It's instantaneous with no buffering. What's more, other streaming services like Netflix, Crave, Amazon Prime and Disney Plus all load and run faster even when viewing 4K content. On my PC, specifically using Ethernet, downloading games from Steam seems to be limited by the speed at which my computer can decompress the incoming data for my M2 drive. One example was that I decided to get back into Cyberpunk 2077 and a 67GB game downloaded in approximately 6 minutes at about peak rate of 190 megabits per second. I have noticed much better connectivity speeds on my other devices. We have a Control 4 entertainment system and the app will download and connect to the equipment much faster now. We also have Lutron lights installed in our house using a Lutron Connect bridge and the Connect app which is also working marginally faster, but less impressively than the Control 4 system. Our home also includes numerous smart speakers, both Google and Amazon Alexa. We also have a smart dishwasher that isn't actually that smart, but that's another video in itself. Plus I've also installed various brands of home security cameras from Google and Wise. However, where I'm seeing the most improvement is from my Hikvision CCTV system. The cameras around my home all use Ethernet and power over Ethernet connections, feeding into a PVR. Camera feeds load in record time, plus access to the PVR for playback and event reviewing is much faster than it used to be. I'm very pleased with the increased performance of our internet and home network. However, I couldn't recommend upgrading from a 1 gigabit service to a 3 gigabit service for everyone. There are other costs potential users should factor into their decision making, especially if your home network and devices aren't ready for the upgrade. For a start, a 3 gigabit connection without the requisite hardware is a bit pointless. You really need a hardwire solution to channel the extra speed and bandwidth around your home. The current available consumer Wi-Fi hardware will only provide a theoretical maximum 1.2 gigabytes per second for Wi-Fi 6E and that's only for the very latest devices that can use 6E. What's more, a lot of contemporary consumer electronics will use legacy Wi-Fi radios that can't utilize Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 6E. If you don't already have the necessary CAT6 Ethernet connections in your home, or you don't have the ability to connect your computer directly to a modem, the extra speed and bandwidth will be wasted. However, if you are lucky enough to have the necessary equipment or resources to upgrade, you will probably enjoy all the benefits of the faster internet. For me, it really breaks down into the benefits covered off earlier in this video, but having said that, if I were to revert to an older, slower 1 gigabit connection, the quality of my life wouldn't drastically be impacted. What I would say is that for the sake of $20 more per month, and that I only needed to update my network switch, it was worth it for the extra convenience for me. What's more, my house is now future-proofed for the foreseeable future for more sophisticated electronics. I do have my eye on that 10 gigabit switch to get that extra 500 megabits per second though. 
Thank you for watching and as always please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos on the connected home and personal technology.